Welcome to my channel. My name is Brittany Storm and I am a freelance mo artist. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to draw modes on Clip Studio Paint. The drawing tablet that I currently use is a Wacom 24 inch Cintiq Pro Touch. I use the Pro Pen 2 and an Ergo stand. I use the EK remote with customizable shark keys, but I'm also going to be mentioning the shark keys that you use for Clip Studio with your keyboard. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a 500 by 500 pixel canvas with 300 dpi. The reason I use a 300 dpi is in case any of my clients want to use the emotes for other things that aren't emotes like um, merchandise or graphics. Once your canvas is made, we can go ahead and start sketching our emote. But before we start sketching, I make sure to have references to the character that I'm drawing or object that I'm drawing. Whether that's different types of expressions or front face, three quarter or side view. For sketching, I use the pencil tool with the brush mechanical pencil. I have pressure sensitivity toggled on so my lines will be darker or thicker with the amount of pressure that is used. Quick tip here, to zoom in or out, use your scroll button on your mouse or tablet pen or the plus and minus buttons on your keyboard. To rotate, shift plus space and to pan, hold the space bar and move your mouse around or tablet. E for eraser, Tapping P will switch from your pen or pencil and B for brush. Control Shift N will create a new layer. To undo something, it's Control plus C and to redo, it's Control plus Y. To increase or decrease brush sizes, it's the symbols. I don't even know what these are called. Um, they look like boxes. There's one going towards the left and one going towards the right. I will also be adding in the description box the list of shortcut tees. Today's emote that we will be drawing will be a Bulbasaur holding a heart. So I always start with a circle. It's just what I do when I make any character. It honestly helps me out in the end instead of just trying to draw the general shape of the character. I then draw a guideline through the circle depending if they're looking in three quarter front or side view. Um, I then just continue to sketch and look over my references. I will flip and rotate to make sure everything is looking well proportioned. Don't try to make your sketch perfect. It's just a sketch. It's just the foundation of the emote. Once my sketching is complete, I go ahead and take a good look at it. I decide if I need to do any small changes or if I need to resize my emote a bit. The important thing about emote is making sure you fill in all of the square area we're given, leaving barely any open space. If it looks good, I reduce the sketch layer opacity by 60 to 80%. I then go ahead and create a new layer. I switch from pencil to pen tool. The pen brush I use is the G pen, which I'm assuming G just stands for general. I keep my brush size anywhere from eight to 12. I do have pen pressure, so my lines aren't the same size always and gives it a bit of characteristics to my lines. I also have stabilization on to help keep my lines crisp. Now I just line where I want to. I try to keep my lines thicker on the outside and thinner on the inside just to give my emote some depth. Once I'm done lining and I like how my lines look, I now get to color. So my line art is always on the top of my layers and I make my layers underneath the line art layer to start adding my coloring. To make coloring faster, instead of hand coloring everything in, I turn my line art layer into a reference layer. To do that, select the layer and then click reference. Once you do that, go to your paint bucket tool and select refer other layers. This now lets you fill in the area you need to on another layer. I always make sure each color I use is on a new layer, so it makes shading and lighting easier and also swapping colors out easier too. Don't be afraid to experiment with colors. With the motes, we want vibrant colors, nothing too washed out. We also want contrast. Once your general coloring is done, if you want to stop here and skip shading and lighting, that's completely okay, but if you want to shade and light, this is how I do it and it's a life changer. I will use the ink G pen tool and the airbrush soft tool for shading and light. If I want to shade and light the main skin color of my character, I just go ahead and select the layer that has my skin color on it. And I create a layer above that layer and I go and find the clip to layer below button. What this does is it kind of puts these two layers together. But when you go ahead and draw the clip to a layer below button, should have a red line beside the layer preview stating it's a clipping mask and it will only let you in that general area so you don't have to worry about major cleanup. With shading, you want to make sure you know what direction your lighting is coming from. I do have some references here on the screen, so just to generally show you guys what that looks like. If you struggle with shading and lighting, 
Just pick a side. Everything on the left will be light and everything on the right will be shade. I try to always, instead of going lighter or darker with that shaded color for shading and lighting, I will try adding more cooler or warmer tones. Once you like the way your emotes look, we can now test and resize your emotes. If you don't want to test, you can skip this part and go right to resizing. To test your emotes, head over to the website levi506.net. This is where you can see your emotes in different sizes, light mode, dark mode, Twitch chat, and Discord. To resize your emotes, you will simply want to save as a duplicate. Go to Canvas Properties and change the size of your canvas to 112 by 112. For transparency, uncheck paper color, then go ahead and click save as file, name your remote 112 by 112, and change save as type as PNG. You can just resize your remote 112 by 112 for Twitch since Twitch offers auto resizing, but if you want to go all the way to the other sizes, you need to do it again for 56 by 56 and 28 by 28. Once resizing is done, you are now finished with your remote. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope all the tips that I gave today helped. If you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and comment down below if you guys want more videos like this, or if you have any general questions, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day.